What's up guys, it's the Carp here, back again with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get started on Football Manager Mobile. And we're going to be doing Burnley, but it's the same general idea with any club. So the first thing I do is go into the squad, you want to look at players with high potential or high ability. Uh, so McNeil here, got decent stats, he's got a 3 star current ability, and he's got the best high, uh, the best potential at the club. Uh, with four and a half stars there, and someone like Nick Pope is our uh, highest rated player here at three and a half stars, but that ability rating isn't everything. You also want to look at their value and stats. Um, so someone like Cork here, he has the chance to improve uh, pretty rapidly. Um, the best sort of way I can describe this is, uh, so if you look at Isco, you look at his stats and then you look at his value. He's worth 115 million and he's got stats like that, but if you were to play Isco um, in a save, his stats are going to go up really quick, and he's going to look like one of the best players in the world. So, Cork, not one of the best players in the world, but he does have the chance to improve pretty rapidly um, and sort of meet that value. Um, so, aside from that, you want to look at uh, mostly the stats. So, I do need a ball playing center back in this formation, uh, so that's why I got Gibson there. And then uh, Tarkowski here, he's got decent, uh, well-rounded stats for a central defender, uh, which is our other position that's there. And you can see I'm missing a ball-playing defender here because I want to play with two ball-playing defenders either side of a center, central defender uh, the way that I play with this 3-5-2. And really the only teams that I wouldn't go with this formation in were are clubs such as Liverpool, um, where their outside backs or wing backs are just too good to, to sort of ignore. Um, but most clubs you're not going to have that and you can sell those uh, those outside backs or wing backs on um, to sort of build your squad elsewhere and it's easier to uh, cover for these center back positions um, and midfielders but anyways so someone like Long here is not going to start because even though he's got a three star rating um, his stats just don't match up to that whatsoever uh, and he doesn't have a high value either He's got no dribbling, no passing. His tackling is really low. The only thing he's really got is physical attributes. Someone like him is going to be starting. Um, and then you just want to go through your squad like that and sort of determine which players you think are good enough. Um, and it really sort of depends on what formation you're, or what roles you're giving. So let's go through those now. So I always go with the sweeper keeper if I can, but that's not the most important. Goalkeeper's fine. Like I already mentioned at the, at the back, uh, you know, the ball playing defenders with a central defender in the middle. So in that case, your ball playing defenders, it says what it, what's, um, it doesn't say. Uh, if you click on them and look at a ball playing defender. So you see how he's a central defender and those certain roles are highlighted. So, obviously, if you're playing with a central defender, you want them to, their stats to look like that. Cork, not Cork, Gibson, you need more, you know, dribbling, passing, um, as well as decent defensive stats. So then, if you are playing with a ball-winning mid in the midfield, you're going to want, you know, high tackling decisions, uh, aerial, whatever. Now, I always like to have at least one advanced playmaker, so in this formation, I don't have one yet. Uh, but he's going to be an attack mid, so since he's an advanced playmaker, we can get away with a central mid and a ball winning mid here. Um, if this was a shadow striker, then I would want him to be an advanced playmaker, in which case I would want to get in somebody that's got you know the stats that fit that description, which is going to be stuff like passing, dribbling, movement, creativity. Um, so you just go through your squad like that, so it's like someone like here, He's, you know, doesn't have any real specialty uh, stats there. He's almost good enough to be a central defender. Um, but really, he's just going to be a uh, backup for us. Someone like Westwood, again, he's got very low dribbling. He's got decent passing, though, uh, and decent uh, tackling, decision positioning. So he wouldn't be a bad uh, balling mid, but he does lack in a key, few key areas. So that's why he's not going to be starting for us. Um, the most he would get is a, a, uh, a sub spot. So once you go through your squad like that and again it kind of depends on the level of your squad you want to kind of I would say you always want to aim to sign at least one player every window but when you're starting a club I would say you want to make at least two um, decent sized signings that's why I've just you know decided uh, upon these two here but you just want to whittle through your squad until you've got two players to fill in and then you want to search for those um, with those stats in mind so your ball playing defender you obviously want to look um, at someone that's got higher dribbling passing um, while still having tackling. And then your advanced playmaker, like I said, you're going to want passing, dribbling, movement, creativity. Uh, those are your key ones. 
So, with uh, the sort of squad building in mind, let's go through and let's go uh, look at the tactics. So I go with attack mentality. I keep balanced width, but I switch to fast tempo and expressive uh, creative freedom. And then defensive, I keep the same. If I'm chasing a game, I'll go high all over and committed. Obviously, you're going to you know, potentially be caught out more if you play this way, but you are going to be winning the ball higher up the field. Um, and then if you're on committed tackling, you are going to get more uh, more cards. But I keep it at that uh, you know, in normal matches. And for attacking, this kind of depends on your forwards, which I will go over uh, the positions with um, in a second now that we've seen this. So in this formation, I'm going with early crossing uh, because I have a target man. If I didn't have a target man, I would just do look for overlap. Um, and then I keep work into box and through balls on as well with, with mixed passing styles uh, all the way through. Penalty takers, the key thing you want to look out for is you just want to look at their shooting, but then you also want to look at the coach report because uh, you can see here is an unconvincing free kick taker. If he was an unconvincing penalty taker, it would say so there. Um, but you can use Ashley Barnes for penalties. You wouldn't want to put him on free kicks, though. So you want to go through and look at each uh, player's coach report, at least for, you know, the eight or whatever uh, that you need to put there as your penalty, ta penalty takers. So, now that we've seen uh, the playing style, the reason that I'm finally putting crosses in is because I've got this target man here. You want to have, uh, I would say, at least one advanced forward in this, uh, you know, attacking two. Uh, the advanced forward is going to be your focal point, like it says there, and for the most part, in any save, uh, this is going to be the player that's going to get, you know, the most goals, the most assists, um, and he will be that focal point of your team. And then, so, aside from the advanced forward, you want this guy to either be a poacher, a target man, or a complete forward. Um, kind of just depends on how good of stats the player has. If you've got somebody that's got, like, you know, 20... Uh, 20 aerial and 20 shooting and whatever. Uh, you probably want to go with a target man over even somebody that has like 14 stats well-rounded as a complete forward. Uh, so if you got a specialist, you want to go for him. And then as for your outside mids or your wingers, um, I go with inside forward. He can play as, as an attacking or uh, an advanced playmaker, but he can also play as a winger, uh, as you can see in... Where's he at? right here. He's actually naturally a winger, um, but he can kind of play as anything, and since he's so young, I'm going to play him as an inside forward just so that he'll get used to playing in that role. Um, so that's what we do for the uh, attacking line. Now, let's go into staff. So this is the other main thing that you want to do. So you can see you've got three gold staff members and your coaches, one gold physio, and then bronze and silver. So first look at their types. So we've got a defensive, a youth, a defensive, and a goalkeeping. So I'm going to get rid of this guy because he's silver and he's not, well, he, he's not as good as our other defensive coach, coach essentially. So now I'm going to keep youth, defensive, goalkeeper. I don't really think it's worth having a slot for, um, but we're going to keep that for now. So the reason for that is because if we look here, first you want to make sure that you can actually um, sign a replacement. So you want to make sure that they're at least gold and natural. And obviously this will scale with the club. So if you're at like a League One club and you uh, can't, you know, find any gold ones, just go down to silver. I would say first, and then uh, potentially go to normal. I would never sign anyone with a, with a poor aptitude. Um, or a bronze badge, unless it's you know really necessary. But you should be able to get at least silver. But we're going for gold first. So we've only got actually two coaches interested, which is uh, really low. But um, so if we look, he's a goalkeeping coach and he's a youth coach. So we already have both of those in our squad. So that's why I didn't want to sack that goalkeeper coach just yet. So we are going to go into silver instead. And um, all right. So now we've got a few more options. So if we look at the coaching types, we've got motivational, um, general, attacking, and fitness that we don't have. Now, my uh, like coach that I've created in this game uh, for like the, my manager, uh, he his specialty is attacking. So if your specialty is like youth or whatever, you don't need a youth coach. My specialty is attacking. I'm not going to get an attacking um, coach. So we can ignore that one. We've already got a youth coach. We've already got a defensive coach. 
I like to have, ideally, youth, fitness, general, and one other. Um, usually motivational is what I go with. But I'm fine with having a defensive. I would love a fitness coach, which we can't get. Can we get a general? We can't. So we've already got goalkeeping. Can we get motivational? We cannot. All right, so it's really not a lot of options. So in that case, we are just going to get um, this other youth coach in. Now, one thing that you can do, and I might show on uh, the other ones if it's an option, but yeah, you always want to have at least four gold coaches, um, or at the very least, if there was a silver like fitness coach, I would have got him and uh, you know made him um, take his exam. So this one's a first team scout. So typically, I don't use my scouts because I don't really seem they don't really seem that uh, kind of useful to me. What I would do instead is I would go sack all of them because none of them are a youth scout, which is what I'm going to be going for. Although I should have checked first to actually make sure we can get scouts. So go here, scout, gold, natural. There's only one, and he is a youth scout. Youth scout. So there we go. We got one in there. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look at silver, and there's plenty here, but only one youth scout. So we're going to offer him the job, and now we're going to immediately have him take his exam, so he failed, so he's just going to be a silver youth scout, but that's fine. We can now go into bronze. So we got one position left, so I, like I said, it's not really worth having a bronze coach, but if you can hire him on and have him take his exam and him pass, there you go, you got one more silver coach. And then uh, you obviously just want to keep you know, having them take their exams every six months, I think it is. Um, and then, you know, you can you just send these guys wherever, you know. Uh, I usually, and you always want to put youth on, but I usually go South American, you can find some really good players, uh, UK and Ireland, obviously, and then I usually send one to each European place uh, in one go as well. Um, but So that's your youth scouts. Now you want to go to physios. So we got one gold prevention there. We got rehabilitation and rehabilitation. So I will keep those guys on for now, just in case for some reason we can't hire any silvers. But first, obviously, we're going to be looking to gold. So now let's go to physios, and there's no options. All right, so silver, we got a decent amount here. So I like to have, ideally, two preventions and one rehabilitation. So I'm going to go ahead and sack these guys. So we've got one prevention now. Let's go ahead and narrow this down to prevention. We need one more prevention. I'm going to go with the youngest one. And then we're going to go for rehabilitation. 29-year-old there. Perfect. He'll be in the job for a long time. And there we go. So that is our staff. Not perfect, but we can go in and take their physio exams. So... They both failed their physio exams. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sack them. And now we're going to go back. And we're going to get the other... Oh, there was only one physio. Oh, I've I've messed up here. Can I offer him the job? Oh, fuck. Alright, we'll just pretend I didn't do that. Um, oops. So, in that case... Yeah, just... Uh, Make sure that you uh, have, you know, backup uh, guys that you can sign. But what I was actually meaning to do is, so for the prevention, we can go back here, offer a new guy the job, have him take the exam. He also failed, so we can sack him. So we can hire this guy, not this guy, this guy. And then we can have him take the exam, and he passed. So there we go. Now we have two gold preventions, and realistically what you should have done there, or what I should have done there, is just kept that silver rehabilitation, and then, you know, just upgrade him whenever possible. So then that's staff is what you want to do there. The last thing uh, before you know you deal with any fixtures and stuff like that is you want to go into board request and you want to first go for youth and then go for training and let's see 
All right, so they're not prepared, prepared to improve the youth facilities, but they are going to upgrade the uh, training facilities. So there you go. You got that. It will uh, take it from your budget, but still, it's worth having. So just every sort of three months, I would say, you want to do those two. And then you also want to, whenever you hit max stadium capacity, you want to expand your stadium. Uh, just because that's going to sort of up your club, um, your club's level. Um sort of over time if you, you know if you have got an 80 80,000 seater stadium um, you know you're earning more money you have more fans all that um, so that's the general idea and there's not really anything else to look at here just a couple of useful things though when you are building your squad it's got lots of negatives positives there but the important thing here is if you go to suggested 11 it's gonna give you what it thinks is your best one but again it's gonna include players like um, me who's just not uh, not great, not really specialty or anything, but still not terrible. Um, and then if you also go into squad depth, this one's really useful because you can see exactly how much depth you have. And you can see right there, uh, I left that position empty, and we really just don't have many players uh, that can play there. Um, but yeah, those are uh, those are some useful squeen squeens. Yep, squeens. Um, but anyways, that's going to be uh, the end of the video. Um, if you guys have any other uh, sort of questions about what you should do sort of towards the beginning of your uh, club career or even national career, because I didn't go over that uh, in this video, uh, just leave a comment and I can do a video on that. I've been playing this game for, uh, for way too long, so I kind of know my way around. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time.